As Kim mentioned, I am going to take you through the uh, web map, uh, which allows you to view the effect of the proposed changes on properties across the Northern Beaches. Um, so to access the web map uh, from Council's home page, uh, you scroll down to approximately halfway uh, where you'll see the Conservations Review tab. Uh, selecting that uh, will take you to the landing page uh, for the Conservations Review which provides all of the relevant information um, associated with the Conservation Zones Review, including information around how to make submissions, as well as the supporting reports. Approximately halfway down the page, you will see a link to the web map. Selecting the blue bar here takes you to the web map. Once in the web map, uh, you'll see that a map does come up on the left hand side. This map is able to be navigated uh, so you can zoom in and zoom out using the middle mouse button and you can pan around using the left mouse button. There are also a number of tabs in the top right hand corner over here uh, which provide supporting information. Uh, so the first one is the instructions tab. Selecting that, that provides a overview um, of how to use the um, web map tool, as well as links to the supporting studies if you were interested in going to those. As well as that, there is the tab for uh, titled acronyms. That provides a glossary of sort um, that, prov that goes through all of the terms and acronyms that are used within the web map. So if you ever do find a uh, acronym or a term that you're unsure of, you can refer to that tab there. The next tab is the criteria definitions tab, which provides a summary of all of the criteria that Kim has just gone through and how they are used to build uh, in for each of the C2, C3 and C4 zones. As well as that, as you scroll down, there is a summary and description provided for each of the layers um, that sit behind the mapping. The next tab over is called uh, split zones. So split zones are where there is one or sorry, is two or more zones over a particular property. They are differentiated in the web map um, as they, as when we were considering uh, split zone properties, we considered each portion of the property as if it were a lot. So we did not seek to change the uh, geometry of the uh, of any existing split zones. If you do click on that to move back to the original um, screen, you just select proposed changes underneath the map or the proposed change button where the split zone button was previously. The next uh, button across is the zoning methodology button. This is a really important, uh, or this provides access to these flowcharts, which are really helpful in understanding how the criteria are um, applied over each property and how a zone is arrived at. I'll go through these in a bit more de detail with a few site specific examples. If you are like me and like to uh, have an aerial image on the uh, map, you can change the base map. Um, so you can do that using the button in the top right hand corner, um, which brings up a number of different base maps that you're able to use. So you can just select on that if you want the aerial imagery um, on there, uh, which allows you to change, change that base map. As well as that, you'll notice that the colors for the C zones are quite similar. So the C2, the C3 and the C4 zone. The colours that have been uh, used on the web map are prescribed by the state government. However, we do acknowledge that those colours can be different to uh, distinguish. As such, we've incorporated the uh, button here that allows you to more clearly distinguish between the different zones. Again, if you did want to change the base map, you can do so in the top right hand corner. Um, and selecting the base map of your choice. So if you did want to search uh, your property, you can do so by uh, right typing in the address in the top right hand corner. 
Uh, for this uh, example, we have chosen um, some sites at random. Um, so we'll just go to those now. So you can start typing the address in and a number of addresses will come up for you to select from. You select those and the map will pan uh, to those locations. It can take a little bit of time as there is a lot uh, going in the background. So looking at this site here in Bower Street in Manly, on the right hand side of the map, uh, you can see all of the information that is relevant to that site. So we can see that this site formed part of the Manly LEP and is currently zoned C3. The proposed zone as a result of this analysis is also C3. The land is within what is referred to as the low density residential area or the urban area. And that is relevant when using the zoning methodology button, which I'll get to in a minute. The review recommendation for this site is that a C3 zone applies to the site as the thresholds for hazard criteria have been met. However, it does note that a C4 zone would have applied if it weren't for those hazard criteria, as the criteria for high environmental value and medium environmental values were met. Next down on the list is the identified criteria. So we can see that the site is affected by the coastal cliffs and also the estuarine hazards. The site is also within the transition area and is part of the uh, biodiversity corridor and urban tree canopy area, as well as being affected by uh, the geotech layer. If we want to understand what the proposed changes are on a site, um, you can scroll down to the change to permissibility table. Um, now, in this instance, there probably shouldn't be any changes because they are both C3. Um, however, this goes through um, and provides that uh, summary for you. Now, if you did want to go through and have a look at the mapping associated uh, with these layers, you can do so by the second uh, row of, uh, of tabs at the top. So if I select on the hazards, um, hazards tab, it will take me to the hazards mapping. You can turn on the hazard mapping by referring to the layers button in the top left hand corner. And then if you click the arrow next to hazard layers and you can scroll down to the relevant uh, layer that you're interested in. In this instance, the site was within the coastal hazards layer and we can turn that layer on and view the extent of that layer. If you do uh, forget how to turn the layers on, there is also this demonstration down the bottom um, where you can click here, which provides a overview of turning on and off the different layers. We also know that this site was within the coastal cliffs area. The coastal cliffs is within the geotech tab. When you select the geotech tab, it will take you back to the site and it will also have all the layers on. So to turn the layers off, you come down, select the arrow next to geotech and turn off the layers that are not relevant. Um, and you can then see the coastal cliff zone and the mapping on how that affects that site. With reference to the legends in the, the right hand side, you'll see there are some asterisks against the different uh, features. Um, so the single asterisk in this instance refers to the medium environmental value criteria and the double refers to the hazard criteria being the coastal cliff zone. If you do want to go back to the original uh, screen for that site, you can select the proposed changes button down here, which takes us back um, to this point. Now to select a different site, again, up the top, we can delete the existing um, entry and then we can start typing in the next site. And again, these sites have been selected at random for this demonstration today. And the map should pan you over to that other site. So again, going through the information on the right hand side, the site is within the Manly LEP. The current zone is C3 and the proposed zone is a C4 zone. 
the site is within the low density residential area, which is relevant for the zoning methodology tab. Uh, the review recommendation is that a C4 zone applies to the site as the threshold for high or medium value environmental criteria have been met. So the criteria affecting the site are the transition zone, the biodiversity corridor or urban tree canopy layer, the geotech layer, and the ridgeline or escarpment layer. Down here, we can see that the HEV or MEV criteria affect more than 50% of the site. So referring to our zoning methodology tab, we can see here that the site was zoned C3. And then if we follow the flow chart through, there were no hazard criteria that affect, affected the site. Um, however, there were HEV or MEV criteria that affected the site. Those criteria affected more than 50% of the site. The site was not an isolated site in that there were other proposed C4 zone sites joining it and therefore a C4 zone applies to the site. Again, if you want to understand the changes to permissibility, you can scroll down to the table at the bottom of the screen to understand how the proposed change affects the use rights on the property. Now, again, we can refer to the different tabs to see the mapping associated with this property. So if we go to the biodiversity tab, it will zoom us back to that site. Sometimes it can take a little bit of time. Sometimes you do just need to give it a little bit of a uh, little bit of a prompt. We can see that our site has been highlighted down here as well. So going to the layers button we can turn on the biodiversity layers that affected the property. So we understand that this site uh, was within the corridor or canopy area. So we can turn on the biodiversity corridors layer uh, and we can see the extent of the biodiversity corridors over the site. We can do a similar thing with the uh, canopy layer. and we can turn off the biodiversity corridors. And so we can see how that particular layer affects the site. Similarly, the site was within a geotech area and uh, within the ridgeline area. So again, going to the layers button in the top left, we can turn on the ridgeline and escarpments layer to see where the ridgeline mapping goes over the site. Similarly, we can turn on the uh, relevant uh, geotech layers to understand where those, the, how that mapping affects the site. Again, it is the darker green, the C3, that is relevant for the MEV criteria. We know that by the asterisk in the legend. Again, if we want to move back to the uh, original screen, we just select the proposed changes button at the bottom. Another way that we can use the web map to understand the proposed changes is just by panning around. So if I unclear or clear that, uh, clear that selection, I'm able to pan around using my left mouse button and we can use this compare zones button in the bottom right that shows the existing or current zones and then the proposed changes on the right hand side. So this allows us to see how the changes um, have been affected over the land. From here, we can click on a certain property using the left mouse button. And if we come back and select the proposed changes, it will come back to this screen here. And again, we can see that the uh, current zone is R2. The proposed zone of this property is C4. The site is within the low density residential area and the review has recommended a C4 zone apply to the site as it exceeds the HEV or MEV criteria. The site is affected by bushfire prone land. Um, it is within the biodiversity corridor or urban tree canopy. 
It is part of the geotech layer and it has ridgeline or escarpment. Now, while the site does have bushfire mapping on it, we can see down here in the threshold and exceptions that the bushfire criteria affects less than 50% of the site. However, the HEV criteria or the MEV criteria affect more than 50% of the site. So if we refer to the zoning methodology tab, we know that this site was zoned R2, that it did have bushfire prone land mapping on it. However, that criteria affected less than 50% of the site. Therefore, it is a no, and we move to the HEV or MEV criteria. We understand that the criteria affected more than 50% of the site. It was not an isolated site, and therefore a C4 zone applied to that particular site. And again, the permissibility table at the bottom of the screen goes through the changes to the use rights on that property. We can as well pan over now to another um, part of the uh, of Manly. Um, and if we have a look at this site here, now where there is a dark dash around the property, um, it is proposed as a split zone. So if I select this site, uh, which is part of the foreshore area, you'll see that the split zones tab comes up. So if I select that, it then moves in to the split zones uh, screen. So this site here is proposed as a uh, C2 and an RE1. We can select on the different portions of the site to understand how the criteria have been affected on that site. So this uh, site, the current zone of this portion of the site is RE1 and it is proposed to be changed to a C2 split. So the site was previously zoned RE1, and it is now proposed to include a C2 split zone over a portion of the site. Again, we can go to the zoning methodology tab to understand how a C2 or an RE1 zone apply uh, to the site. So the site was zoned uh, previously as RE1, it did not have a conservation mechanism on it. Um, it was uh, identified in Council's open space and recreation strategy, um, and it is part of a natural area, um, and a C2 split zone was proposed over the proportion of the site um, that is considered to have the environmental values. As well as that, if we want to go back to the original screen, we can select the proposed changes and we can have a look at this area here that has been proposed for residential zones. If we're interested in understanding or how the mapping affects this area, we can come and just select the layers again. Now I'm back in the hazards tab. Up in the top left hand corner, I can turn on the, oh sorry, the coastal hazards is already turned on. Um, I can go over to the geotech tab, come back to layers, and I can turn on the coastal cliff zone. And we can see that the coastal cliff zone affects all of the frontal properties along Bower Street. Um, however, not the properties uh, on the southern side of Bower Street, which would explain why these properties were not triggered as a C3 zone. So that provides a summary of how to utilise the web map.